So in numerical weather forecasting, meteorologists are relying on the accuracy of those initial conditions so they can feed them into the computer, right? But even if the initial conditions are spot on, um, it's possible that um, even very similar sets of initial conditions fed to the same computer using the same model, it's possible that you can get very different ultimate, maybe even down the road, weather events, forecasted weather events. This is known as the butterfly effect. And as I understand it, the reason they call it the butterfly effect is if a butterfly, for instance, in South America flaps its wings, we here in North America will get one weather set of weather conditions. If then that same butterfly does not flap its wings, we'll get a different um, weather situation here in North America. So it's called the butterfly effect. Kind of related to that then is something generally called chaos. And it says, well, inherent to all measurements, like initial conditions that we're measuring, temperature and pressure and wind speed, wind direction, humidity, inherent in all uh, measurements is a little bit of uncertainty. And there's a little bit of play in that number. Okay, And so, for instance, if we were measuring temperature, you know, we use a thermometer of sorts, and let's just say we came up with 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, there's a little bit of tolerance or play in that temperature that somebody told us. For instance, because of my measuring device, I'm going to say it's plus or minus uh, 2 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means that play will result in that temperature could really be 32, 31, 30, 33 or 34. So right away I have kind of a whole suite or set of possible real temperatures um, based upon the one temperature that I was given based upon the fact that there is some little bit of wiggle in that measuring device. Okay, so um, whew, there's this type of numerical weather forecasting known as ensemble forecasting. So what it does basically, and I have an example here in a minute, is it tries to kind of account for that little bit of play in the initial conditions. And what it does is to run the run a series of forecast, forecasts based on just slightly differing initial conditions. And then what you do is you look at the reason they call it ensemble and for, forecasting is that you look at the ensemble or the possibilities of the various forecasts and you kind of look for um, something that repeats, look for similarities. And then the ones, the forecasts that look similar, they kind of pull weight to say, ah, then if we can, if we continue to have this uh, particular forecast, a pattern here, then we have confidence in our particular forecast. So this sort of ensemble forecasting can um, can also help kind of um, troubleshoot um, uh, computer models that aren't working. So here's an example. It's a famous example. Um, and you're going to see on the next slide actually a set of 50 weather forecasts that were put together at the same time from just taking the initial conditions and kind of like taking slightly different twists on the initial conditions. Again, kind of all within, you know, we're not coming up with different initial conditions, but we're just taking into consideration that they all, all those measurements have a little bit of uncertainty in them. Back in 1999, uh, Germany and France were hit with a, uh, a uh, mid-latitude cyclone, basically. And they were creamed, this would be what, uh, Christmas Eve? They were creamed with a weather event that was not necessarily broadcasted to be coming. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, what these folks thought they'd get on Christmas Eve. And then I'm going to show you what they got. And then I'm going to show you these 50, uh, these 50 uh, a set of 50 ensemble forecasts for that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, 
Christmas Eve, 1999, Germany and France. So this is the forecast that their neck of the woods put out. And I don't know, it might be kind of hard for you to tell, but it's a, it's a fairly calm forecast. Okay, this is what actually happened. Okay, so um, basically they, they screwed up. But the question would be, if we were to go ahead and take the initial conditions and go ahead and the initial conditions here and go ahead and make an ensemble of 50 forecasts um, with slightly differing initial conditions, what would it look like? So here we go. This uh, is looking for to see if we do get that nasty weather. So there's 1 through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30. Okay, so there's our set of 50 uh, different outcomes with slightly different, with same initial conditions, just kind of varying them just slightly. And so um, here's the point. If you kind of look for, I'm just kind of looking for color and tight isobars, look for these that might suggest that that Christmas Eve would have been a bad one. Remember, um, mid-latitude cyclones basically um, you have a central low pressure, and you can have an assortment of uh, nasty weather. So I think what, uh, what could be said, perhaps, is that, uh, yeah, they could have maybe um, anticipated, even with the model that they were using, that uh, there was going to be an issue. So I don't know. That's ensemble forecasting, though.